Hi, welcome to this short uh, live stream from Emerald Hills, uh, part of Emerald Hill Skies as we're looking uh, heavenward tonight. Uh, my name's Doug, and we're looking at our targeting software called Astro Planner. We've been doing some observations, and we've just decided to slew to M33. And in our Sky Safari Planetarium program, you can kind of see how beautiful the object is. This is a picture of our field of view of our Rasa 8-inch telescope. And we'll kind of widen out here so you can see sort of where this object is in the night sky. Here's Andromeda and Pisces, uh, Cetus, Aries. So to kind of get your bearings, we're looking uh, kind of due west, really, due west. And up here at the top is the zenith. That's straight up. If you just, just pointed straight, 90 degrees straight up, you would see the zenith. So this is pretty high up in the sky. Uh, I guess right now it's about, uh, yeah, almost exactly halfway, 42 degrees up. So what we do next is we go over to our um, actual camera view, I guess you could say, uh, in a program called SharpCap. And in SharpCap, you can see we're doing live stacking of this object. We've stacked eight frames so far, and each frame is a 30 second time exposure. And we're stacking those 30 second time exposures one on top of the other. We have our gain set around 100. The uh, camera that we have, the Zwo ASI 2600 MC Pro, it really likes that 100 gain setting. In fact, it likes it just as much as it does zero, to be honest. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good experience for that camera, the 2600. So then what we do is we can set this, um, reset this histogram down here. The histogram is kind of a picture of all of the different frequencies that you're getting. And then what we can do is sort of color balance those automatically according to these peaks that we're getting. We set our black level just barely to the right of that peak until we like the color of the sky. And we're on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky at a little, uh, a little campus of team expansion called Emerald Hills. And it's a pretty high, like, Bortle 6 light dome of Louisville. But in spite of that light pollution, we're able to actually see quite a bit. Part of that's due to the fact that we have a Celestron light pollution filter running in this Rasa 8-inch. Rasa is the Roe Ackerman Schmidt uh, astrograph. That's R-A-S-A -A telescope. And that allows us to operate in pretty light polluted skies. And you can see we're starting to see the, just make out the pinwheelness of M33 as a pinwheel uh, galaxy. Tell you what, while that's live stacking, why don't we go over to uh, the planetarium program? Uh, it's Sky Safari and we will play for you the um, uh, audio uh, narration of this object. Um, and I, I like doing this in a way because, you know, you get to kind of hear the professional uh, reading of this and listen in as we hear about M33. M33 is a great pinwheel galaxy, one of the closest large galaxies to our own. It gets its name from the pinwheel form visible on photographs. To the backyard observer, M33 looks like a pale circular disk. It is within the little visited constellation Triangulum. On nights where clouds or the moon rain nearby, M33 is hard to spot, since although it is a large object, it will not show itself if the sky contrast is poor. In dark skies, it is an easy object in binoculars, and has been seen with the unaided eye, provided one knows exactly where to look. M33 is located more than 3 million light years from Earth. The Milky Way galaxy, M33, and M31 are the three largest galaxies in our local group of two dozen island universes. Wow. Can you imagine uh, that you are looking at an object that's that far away? I mean, uh, I can't get my arms around that idea that these little light uh, photons travel in those packets and those dots of, of little light bits across all that empty space to get to us. 
keep in mind, this is a different galaxy. So for, for this to have traveled all this way, what did he say? Was it three million? Was that what he said? Almost three million light years away. The fact that it can come to us, it's, it's amazing. This galaxy was mentioned in a Star Trek episode, by the way, in the episode called Where No One Has Gone Before. And it's the galaxy that uh, Enterprise went to when the warp when the when the warp engine malfunctions and it boosts it out in the middle of nowhere. It sends it to the Triangulum Galaxy, as it's also known, uh, Pinwheel Galaxy. Uh, it's pretty cool, isn't it? That that M33 is visible in a in a city night sky like this that we can bring this much detail out. You can start to see some of these pinwheel arms. Uh, even though we've only been looking at it for eight minutes. Now, the really beautiful images that you see of it are uh, astrophotographers that take their time and maybe view it for five hours. And they let their camera take pictures of it for five hours. But look what we've got in nine minutes. We've got these spiral arms. You can see an arm here flinging material out. You can see an arm there flinging material out. There's some material here. I imagine that these stars are traveling with it in a cluster. Some some nebula space dust here. So let's do one other thing while that's uh, stacking, just a couple more frames. Let's go back over to Sky Safari one more time. And let's look one more time at the picture of it through one of those, um, you know, five-hour... Uh, beautiful photographs. This is pretty much what we're seeing. We see, we see this arm. We see this arm. We saw some material here. Remember we were talking about this dust that's being thrown out here. This is pretty much exactly what we're seeing. Now, we're not seeing it in this beautiful blue color, are we? Let's go back and see if we can't mess with the color balance just a little bit and make, make ours look a beautiful blue like that. And then we'll say goodnight to uh, M33. I'm going to do the color balance here. One more time by peaks. We're not getting the right color balance, are we, by peaks? So let's try color balancing automatically by stars. That's not working for us. Very, oh, that's starting to, to work for us a little bit. That's a little bit too much blue, isn't it? Let's bring that blue down just a shade. And I think we'll bring the red down a shade so we can let that blue shine through, kind of like they did. And uh, let's just gaze at that one more time. I'll get rid of this uh, histogram down here so you can get the full effect. In fact, let's make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, look at that. That's showing us those clouds in between. I was telling the earlier crowd, I think I can improve my focus a little. And the next live stream I do, I should have a focusing motor. It should have arrived. I have a focusing motor installed so I can maybe work with this. But part of this is just because we're, we're enlarging this now so big uh, that we're starting to see just some, you know, aberration. But look at how this material out here we're starting to see now. That's pretty cool. It's flinging that material all the way out here, that dust and star producing material look at that look there's a little galaxy you can see here little spiral galaxy that's kind of peeking out look at those little three stars that are in the middle of it kind of an impressive object isn't it now that we've now that we've worked with it for a while i feel like we we kind of we kind of know it it's like our we know m33 we'll remember this now well thank you for being a part of this the Last thing we do in our workflow is we uh, we grab our live stacking uh, uh, tab down here and we snap a picture of it exactly as we're seeing it. And that picture, then what we do is we go back to our targeting software. And in our targeting software, we uh, do a, an observation. And we say, you know, whatever we would say in words, um, we might say, um, wow, um, pulled out the uh, star 
material and dust, saw the core, saw the spiral, pinwheel, arms, you know, it's named after that. And uh, then in our attachments, we'll um, grab that picture, um, M33, and that way we've got kind of a good memory of it. Now the picture is of the whole frame, so we can always uh, crop into that later, just like we did when we enlarged it. And that's pretty much our workflow. So thanks for watching this, uh, you know, kind of close up of the pinwheel galaxy, the Triangulum galaxy and that famous Star Trek episode M33. And we hope uh, to see you again on another short or maybe on some live stream. Don't forget, you can go to emeraldhillskies.com and uh, sign up to be alerted when we're gonna do one of these live streams. We usually give you about 48 hours notice. And you can also uh, use that as a link to hop directly to our YouTube channel, which is also called uh, Emerald Hill Skies. And there you'll find not only entire two-hour live streams, but also other shorts just like this one. Thanks a lot for being a part of this, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. God bless, and uh, thanks again to Team Expansion for letting us use their campus of Emerald Hills on the outskirts of Louisville. And we'll see you again.